Okay, hello, good afternoon. <coughs> Hopefully you can hear my voice. <coughs> hello, hello. Alright, so. <coughs> Let me start the live. So hello, this is... Junichiro Rikawa. This is the weekly live stream uh, which is called as Houdini Al Algorithmic Life <coughs> to show you some process for algorithmic designs using Houdini. <coughs> uh, this is 112th episode and the topic for today is to create kind of a procedural plant growth system like this. Uh, using KineFX as a base system from scratch and since this is procedural and I'm not using any solver you can change the parameters dynamically while uh, animating so everything is animatable <coughs> any, every parameter is animatable and the setup itself is pretty straightforward the <coughs> base is the base of this plant system is uh, on top of a kinefx curve <coughs> which is like these like these it's just about a curve growth system All right <coughs> So that's what I'm going to try to show you today and in the end I'm going to shade this as something look like a plant. There's no particular plant that I'm imagining of, it's just a virtual. Uh, <coughs> some might exist kind of a plant so you could use it as a base to create your own plant system, I guess. Alright, <clears throat> so let's try to do this from scratch, as always. Alright, so I'm gonna change the background to dark. Starting from geometry node. I'm gonna start by creating a straight line goes to the y direction and which is going to be the base for this plant that I'm going to create okay <clears throat> now uh, first parameter I want to set is the length of this base I could say it as a core <coughs> line or core curve of this plant so let's try to to be able to control these values, the lengths, using a no node, which has all the parameters that I want to control later. So I'm gonna name this controller. <coughs> gonna drag and drop the length parameter for the line. Let's say I'm gonna name this <coughs> flat lengths. Alright. Okay, now next I am going to set a resample node so that I have enough points to make this curve bend. I want to bend this curve to make it look natural <coughs> affected by some gravity or something so let's try to set a number of points based on some parameters and the parameter for these resample could be this step length uh, for the division <coughs> for the resampling so this might also be another parameter so I'm gonna drag and drop that as well I'm gonna 
randomly name it. <coughs> okay, so I have now two parameters. And I want to test out, at this point, I want to test out uh, by bending this curve using KineFX system. <coughs> okay, in order to do that, I am going to use the one called rig attribute wrangle, which you can use this to simultaneously control the transformation of each at each point, especially the local transformation, so that it could be used for like the skeleton, the rig, or the characters, as well as this kind of um, <coughs> plant movement without changing its length you can create a bending system pretty easily so <clears throat> let's try to do that so in order to use this one you need to have some information as an attribute to the point so I'm going to use the I'm going to use this Rick doctor to create an empty attributes for the transformation you need to uh, enable this initialize transform which will create these local transform attributes name and the global transform attributes right which contains its uh, position scales and rotation information on each point All right <clears throat> now currently it's not rotating anywhere it's not moving to anywhere so the matrix is just an identity matrix. Now, from here, I'm gonna try to <coughs> um, modify these attributes or transformation values to actually transform these points one by one uh, simultaneously. So, <coughs> for example, if I wanna bend this curve uh, using, let's say, x-axis or z-axis I could <coughs> first of all create a rotational matrix then apply that matrix to the current local transform at each point then simultaneously it will be applied the rotation matrix will be applied rotation transform will be applied to the local transform each one will bend simultaneously and you'll get the result <coughs> the final result hello everybody so let's try creating the matrix first uh, for the rotation starting from the ident I'm gonna use the rotate function to rotate the matrix create the rotational matrix uh, let's set the angle something random for now so radians of five degrees and then uh, set the axis to let's say uh, x-axis so <clears throat> x-axis is this red axis so based on this axis the rotation goes this way or maybe counterclockwise if it's positive and now that I have this rotational matrix I can now apply this to a local transform uh, in order to do that um, I could either rotate the ooh, wait a minute I could get the uh, local transform as from an attribute <coughs> then multiply it by the rotational matrix that I've just created and there you go each point bend 
five degrees locally and as a total <coughs> result you get something like a bending uh, curve okay <coughs> so that's pretty easy now what I want to do here is I just don't want to make this like regular bending for each point but I want to make it a bit more natural I want to be able to control this <coughs> maybe the bottom part bend less the top part bend more because of the gravity uh, so I want to be able to control that <coughs> the amount of bending based on its position so to do that I'm going to create a angle based on uh, either a point position or a point number I think it might make sense to use the point um, number because I can then uh, normalize it or regularize it into 0 to 1 so let's try to do that first I'll get the point number which is PTNUM this goes from zero to 15 for now let's make the size a bit bigger and what I want to do is to change these point number into 0 to 1 remap these into 0 to 1 so it'll be easier to use later so I'm going to divide this point number divided by a numpt which is the total number of the point <clears throat> for this primitive uh, or you could use endpoints alright then this one will give you 16 because it starts from 0 so I think it might make more sense if I make this subtracted by 1.0 so that this will be 15 then you dividing these point number by 15 you get from 0 to, fifth, uh, zero to 1 <coughs> okay or you could use fit function <coughs> which goes from 0 to endpoints 0 0 this is another way to do it which is more versatile but a bit longer so I'm gonna skip this for now okay now that I got this F I can now I, can, I would like to try to use this to convert it into some kind of an angle value which is currently a 5 here set as 5 here so <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is to first of all create a parameter max angle max angle and then <clears throat> multiply this max angle by f value which starts from 0 and end at 1 so <clears throat> if it's at the bottom you get really low angle value if it's at the top you get this max angle value then use this or I maybe I should create another variable something like that and then use this angle as <clears throat> a rotational angle okay so let's try to set this max angle so this is a degree I'm gonna set the maximum to maybe 90 something let's see what happens as you can see at the bottom when the number the point number is really low you get small number of ang angles then gradually the rotation gets bigger and bigger bending up bigger and bigger like that all right let's increase the point number like that 
Look at your, your pretty interesting result. <clears throat> now, this is still a bit too artificial to my, uh, from what I think. So what I would like to do next is to add another um, <clears throat> uh, option to be able to change the mapping of this angle. Not the maybe the plant might not go oh, always from low angle to the higher angle, but <clears throat> mm, you might want to make the angle at the bottom larger, then go lower on the top, maybe at some conditions. Maybe if you're not creating a plan for the earth, but some for somewhere else. So I am, what I'm going to do is to change this F value, which is currently a linear value from 0 to 1 into something different by using a ramp parameter. So <coughs> well, I can name this B as a bending, use CH ramp, name this bend or angle ramp, then convert F value into something else and use B instead of F. Now, <coughs> When you first create the ramp parameter, it looks like these. It's the linear mapping. So if you, the x coordinate is the f value that I've inputted here. And the y value, the y axis is the, the output, the actual output that you're going to get out of this ch ramp. So by changing this curve into something else than these linear transitions, you get, you can control the incrementness of this angle. I'm gonna set this to B spline at each end and try to change these curve. And you see, you start to see a different kind of <coughs> bendness happen. For example, for this one, it bends really pretty high on initial conditions then slowly it start to not bend now it doesn't really look like a plant so I'm gonna always start from zero but other than that you could try controlling stuff pretty well com combining with these max angle well so anything could be possible but I'm just gonna go with the really simple setup something like these <coughs> like a logarithm curve yeah looks up looks a bit more natural for this one okay so let's say this is going to be the base <coughs> curve I'm gonna use hey okay. <coughs> now Currently, the axis is only one-sided, so it's on a flat plane right now for this curve, which still looks a bit too artificial. <clears throat> so let's also change that by trying to change these uh, angle <clears throat> for the rotation into something else. <clears throat> for example, if uh, if you change this uh, axis, the rotation axis, to random based on the positions you really have uh, doesn't change that much though <clears throat> um, I was hoping it would change a lot but not that much well it does change yeah so in the initial conditions it doesn't really rotate that much on the initial position so it doesn't really rotate if you bring this up like these so you have more bendiness now this is a bit too much so 
maybe not using random is a bit too much so instead of using randomness might want to use something <coughs> else in order to make some noise uh, into this axis so what I'm gonna do is to probably use something like a noise function to control these axes okay <clears throat> especially what I would like to control is this x and z value based on uh, something so let's try to use noise function for that and I'm not sure what I should be based on I could probably use B or F either one uh, B might sound okay but F could also be okay so maybe I'll go with F value and you might want to multiply this by some multiplier so that uh, <coughs> you can control the randomness the smoothness of this noise functions then you also want to subtract this by 0.5 for each coordinate so that you also get the negative value from negative 5 to positive 0.5 now, <clears throat> after using this, you don't really need the y-axis value, so I can reset it to zero. Now, let's try using this as an axis for the rotation. Oops. See what happens. Okay. Um, okay. The I see the problem now. In order to use the axis for the rotation, it needs to be normalized in order to pr prevent stretching. So, we need to normalize this so that the length will always be equal to 1. There you go. Okay, it looks a bit too noisy right now, so let's try to control these values. I'm going to name this noise smooth. <clears throat> See what happens. I'm gonna change the range from zero to hundred for this value. Let's see how this value changes. Okay. Well Maybe I should make the range much, much smaller. More like from 0 to 1, I guess. To make it smooth. Okay, so starting from 0. When it's when is it equal to 0? Okay. What happens to when it becomes zero <coughs> okay so when when it's equal to zero it just give you zero 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 so I should probably give additional one or maybe not maybe the minimum I should set the minimum to really small numbers like 0.001 or something. Alright. So if it's close to zero, you get kind of a linear result, which is pretty similar to what you get using x axis, straightforward. But then if you increase this value, you start to change the axis direction you get a bit more interesting result okay so you can control this I'm gonna change it to something more look like a plant okay so start to look more organic at least compared to the last result 
All right. <clears throat> so let's say I am um, I would like to go with these setup. Uh, let's mm, bring all these parameters that I have created to the controller to go for the next step. Okay. So I have these max angle noise smoothness and the angle ramp let's rename this mm. max base angle this is uh, base noise base ax Rot axis smoothness and this is the base angle ramp I don't need to show the control by default all right so <clears throat> so far uh, looks good I think now what I would need uh, from here is to create a branch right to the space to make it look more like a plant <coughs> on the street or on the field so <coughs> how do we do that um, and I also want to create some kind of animation animation you based on the frame so it look like it's growing from start to the end uh, procedurally without using solver so I need to make a plan for that uh, in order to do that so let me think about it mm. <clears throat> so what I could do um, first of all I might want to create a setup so in order to make this base curve grow from the from start to the end and let's say this is the one that I have here is the end result okay I want to make I want to be able to create animation or <coughs> set up so that the curve growth from 0 to this result using the frame so <coughs> in order to do that um, I am going to use uh, there are several ways you could uh, in order to do that there are several ways to do that. One easy way is to use a carve node, <coughs> which is good because it's pretty easy to use. Though the problem is this method is easy, but it only works if you have one branch. But later I have multiple number of branches uh, which is not suitable <coughs> for this kind of setup and additionally <coughs> I also want to uh, use some attributes during the uh, trimming of this curve so probably it will be better if I could do this programmatically instead of using the node which has less flexibility so instead of using this one, I'm going to import some functions from a default library, <coughs> which is available officially from a Bex. So I'm going to use a primitive wrangle and use something called groom library, which is used to control the hair geometry. <coughs> Right and mm, in order to use this, um, there is a function called at just prim uh, length inside this library, and the parameter that I need to set is the geometry input, then the primitive number in order which one in order 
to control and the original curve length which I don't have it right now so let's make that measure node use the measure node to calculate the perimeter and use that as a third parameter and the final parameter will be the target length for the curve so I'm just going to multiply this parameter by some kind of a <coughs> ratio like if I say 0.5 then the length will be half the size then as you can see the lengths I think have just changed to the half so if I make this parameterize like that goes from 0 to 1 you'll be able to create a simple curve growth animation just like you did with the cough node <coughs> okay now <coughs> that's good um, I'm gonna use name this grammatical mm. curve <coughs> now after this what I would like to do now is to um, create a initial branching uh, initial branch curve to each of the point or at some of the point position or maybe not on the point position but somewhere on the curve I want to create some branch uh, as an initial step <coughs> okay so how do we do that how do we do that in order to do that we need to um, <coughs> know the uh, first of all let's try to animate this so let's see if it's gonna work in order to animate this you just need to change this value based on the frame so I'm gonna divide F frame with the frame end so that will give you a value from around 0 to 1 at the end alright I don't want to go from till the end to finish the uh, growth so I'm going to tweak the expression a little bit so that it will stop growing at some point maybe like 2200 or something in order to do that you could multiply this F end by some kind of percentage like 0.9 then <coughs> make use the minimum function so that the maximum value will always be 1. There you go. Then it will stop growing somewhere around here. And for the last 20 or 30 frames, it's not, nothing is going to happen. You have some space <coughs> in this uh, animation. All right, <coughs> looks good. Now, so the next thing I would like to do is to while it's growing I also want to create a branch branches to this plant <coughs> while it's animated and in order to do that <coughs> uh, probably there are two ways one way is to use the solver which is straightforward you just need to create some kind of a seed into a curve onto a curve at some point then start making these seed grow <coughs> based on the timeline but the problem with the solver is that you uh, need to always reset the simulations if you want to change the parameter later so <coughs> I'm gonna go with the second option which is to do this procedurally um, by creating the last result <coughs> uh, first uh, starting from the last result then make the last result be animated <coughs> more of a kind of a fake animation compared to the solver but um, more <coughs> usable uh, useful for 
many situations if you don't really need like a physically correct result or anything related to a recursive simulations <clears throat> the one that I'm gonna create today is not really based on a recursive uh, <clears throat> result you don't need to know the result from the last frame in order to make it growth because the shape that I'm gonna create is pretty simple based on the mathematical equations so <clears throat> you don't really need the solver for that so in order to do that I would like to create a branch maybe here so maybe I could maybe I could mm, probably I should create the branch after this or before this I'm not sure which one's better maybe I can do this after animating these cur carve branch animations so after animating this I'm going to create another primitive wrangle to create a branches And in order to create the branch, uh, I just I don't just want to create the branch on top of each point because it's just going to be really uh, a lot of branches. I want to be able to choose whenever position on a curve, <coughs> not really dependent on the point position. Uh, so in order to do that, you do need to have um, a UV for the curve or in this case just a u value for the curve now currently I don't think I have that kind of value for this curve if I look at the attribute uh, <coughs> for this curve at the point I don't have any uv informations at each point so let's create that I can do that by going back to the resample node this has an option to create the u value which is called curve u attribute which will create the value in between 0 to 1 <coughs> from the starting point of the curve to the end point of the curve so if you look at the attribute now you'll get this curve u which starts from 0 and at 1 okay so using these u value I'll be able to uh, pick the position at any anywhere on these curve not just on the point but maybe somewhere here or somewhere here based on the percentage of the curve uh, u value so <clears throat> now that I have that let's try to first of all pick and which position I want to create the branches right so assume that this is a <clears throat> final result I am uh, currently at the end frame I'm always going to work on the end frame for now on uh, to see the final result and later gonna test that out using these animation to see if it still works later but for now I'm gonna go with the end frame and see what happens so the first um, parameter <clears> or <throat> first value that I want to set is the number of branches how many branches I want for this pro plant uh, <clears throat> let's create a parameter for as an integer for integer Let's set the range from 0 to 100, 100, no, 100, okay, <clears throat> and for now, I'm going to try to divide these curve uh, equally using this branch um, <clears throat> number, 
maybe later I can also remap the position wise uh, positions based on <coughs> uh, its percentage uh, or the lengths but for now let's say I'm, a, I'm going to equally divide this curve with this number to create a branch uh, <coughs> by not using this point information at all I mean not point number information at all <coughs> so to do that uh, since I have set a number of branches I want to create I'm going to use the for loop okay, I'm using a new keyboard which the layout is US keyboard I mean, often use Japanese keyboard layout so it's a bit different it makes special key layout totally different makes me mistype a lot today so <coughs> mm, uh, first thing I want to do is to uh, convert this I value which is from 0 to a branch number minus 1 uh, to a regularized number meaning from 0 to 1 just like I did for the point number last time so <coughs> I'm gonna convert this I this time I'm gonna use fit so I which is in between 0 to branch number minus 1 to 0 to 1.0 Okay, <clears throat> now now that I got this f value, f means f could mean like a percentage of this curve length. If it's 0.5, it will be a middle point position. If it's zero, it's at the start. If it's one, it's at the end. So based on this value, I want to pick the position on the curve. And in order to do that, you could use a function called prim uv <coughs> using f as a u value okay or mm, um yeah maybe maybe I, um now that i think i'm not sure if i could still use this when being with when it's being animated I might need to use something else, but uh, let me check. So, uh, let me try to pick the point position uh, using prim uv. Maybe I should, I cannot use this one after all, but let me just check it. So, and I want to get the point position value. And the primitive that I want to get is number since I'm at the I'm using primitive wrangle and I'm gonna use F as a UV value or maybe I need to make this as a, <coughs> a vector value but uh, should be okay now <coughs> now that I got this point position let's try to draw this by adding it To on the curve, see in let's see in which position they I have these points. It's a bit hard to see, so let's make the point marker size a bit bigger. Okay, this one doesn't do nothing. Geometry, did the particle point size? Okay, so right now I have these points uh, in total I have 11 points looks fine but if I do the animation yeah there's a problem here <coughs> now I don't I don't want to always divide these uh, branch with 11 numbers but because <coughs> the branch position shouldn't change while it grow or it might grow it might change but uh, I don't want to make do it something like that. I want to keep the position of each branch uh, even if at this point position. So for these 
the number of branches could be two or three at this frame. At 50, you should have something like six branches at the end. In the end, you'll be able to have 11 branches. So using prim UV is not a good idea for this purpose. So instead of using this one, I need to use something else. Okay, what else I could use? Um, wondering if I could use UV sample, but what I remember is UV sample is only for the surface and not usable for the curve, I guess. Yeah, let me see. Let me check. So UV sample, <coughs> similar to prim UV, but you could also um, <coughs> specify the UV attribute by yourself. What I want to get is the point positioned and what I'm going to use as the sampling value is curve UV but since the UV has to be in vector value I need to create the vector value out of curve UV. From the, sam from the resample you get this value. I want to convert this into a UV value. So let's do that by having point wrangle right after the resample create a UV having curve UV as an X value and the less tool will be zero just like that Oop. Uh, wait curve U yeah, like that. Okay, now going back, I'm going to use the UV as a sampling value. <coughs> then, um, looking, wait, what was the parameter for the UV sample? So I have geometry number, uh, attribute number, attribute name, UV name and the UV value, okay. So, the UV is set F00, in this case. Now, let's see. Okay, now, this one looks a bit more realistic, a bit more correct, but uh, seems to have some kind of a glitch here. Sometimes it shows up the points, sometimes it's not showing up the points for some reasons. Let's see why. Looks weird. Okay. So something must be off. I guess it's rounding up uh, this one because the curve is trimmed with the carve or with this adjust prim length. The UV is kind of an incomplete looking at these. And I I can also see that the last UV value is also zero. That makes this uh, glitching. Okay, so I need to fix that one. The last curve U value has to be where it has been ended when it has been <coughs> uh, related to these value here so to do that I need to go back to here adjust prim lengths uh, or <coughs> after I have trimmed the curve I can use the point wrangle and then uh, sample back the U value <coughs> using another UV sample, I guess. So curve U is UV sample. Looking at the second input, 
what I want to get as a output is curve view, curve view, and what I'm going to use as a sample is point position. Use the current point position to get the value, and do the same for the UV. Let's see what happens. Okay, so now I think I got the the better result. There you go. All right, so <clears throat> now going back here, hopefully I'll get the match result. Okay, no more glitches. Nice. Okay, looks good. Um, so all these points, is this also a branch point? I'm not sure. Let me check that. I'm gonna make this colored red. Because I don't really need the last point as a branch. So I can skip that. Okay, so this is being created as a branch, so let's try to create the conditions to skip the one at the end. Alright, so how do we do that? How do we do that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What I could do, what I could do... Now this is because I'm trying to sample the one that's on the top. And since there are no curve on the top, it just goes to the closest point position and looking at this value here. <coughs> so I guess <coughs> what I could do to hmm, what kind of information I would need in order to remove this. I guess I could use a rest position <coughs> somewhere after bending then also sample the rest value as well create these rest position which is same as the point so mm, why did I need it that <coughs> and after this after this um, what I need <coughs> what I would need Okay, okay. I guess instead of using rest positions, I could sample the actual curve U from the curve using the same UV sample. But instead of getting the point position, I could get the curve U at the specific point position. And if this F, if there is some differences between F and curve U, then you know that uh, it's not on the curve so in that case you want to skip creating the points so if absolute <coughs> f minus curve u is more than zero then you want to skip it so if it's equal to zero which means it's on the curve so you can create the points so like that now you can get rid of all the points which is at the end okay there you go all right so now i got now i've got the <coughs> branch positions it's time to actually create the branch 
line from here. So let's try to do that. Um, so in order to create a branch, I'm going to just create the line as a base. So let's start by creating a simple line by starting by creating uh, <coughs> another point. To the x direction as a test. Then combine these two points as a line. Using add trim with the polyline option. There you go. At this point, I don't really need to set the color anymore, so let's get rid of it. Okay, so this looks really not look like a branch, so we need to uh, change this to a more natural looking stuff. <coughs> First thing is the branch angle based on this core, right? The core curve. Uh, it's not natural to just use the x-axis as the constant value but it has to be aligned with this perpendicular to this curve the base curve as well as the angle should be rotated for each branches based on some uh, mathematical equations in my case I'm gonna use the golden ratio value which is 137.5 degrees per branch which is a uh, <coughs> angle to create a Fibonacci like spiral so <coughs> let's do that first thing first I'm going to align these curve with the core curve to do that you what you need the base core curve uh, informations in terms of the normal direction and the tangent direction so we need to create that <coughs> so let's do that by calculating the uh, tangent probably I could use the orient along curve or I could either use polyframe as well either one should do the job I think let's check so I'm gonna connect the <coughs> from the measure node to the orient curve orient along curve this will create a y-axis as an app and tangent vector as a normal so if I check the normal direction so this is the tangent vector good now if I check the up vector value check with the marker so well, this is the up vector which also looks good it's perpendicular to the tangent and it looks clean enough let's see another one the polyframe so this will give you an n as a normal and normal is currently a perpendicular direction so I'm gonna rename this to same as the orient curve so this one looks pretty much the same I guess uh, a bit different yeah especially the up vector is different so I can either choose polyframe or orient along curve but this one looks more natural in terms of the uh, <coughs> changes of this up vector value and perpendicular vector value compared to the polyframe yeah is this really perpendicular don't doesn't really seem like so so instead of using polyframe I'm gonna use orient along curve and connect these now that I have these information I could uh, use that to <coughs> decide 
the branch direction, especially using the up vector value. Um, <clears throat> hello everybody, I have a question. Rutuj, can procedural foliage generators be made in Blender and used in engines? <clears throat> Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I do. I did see uh, you could create a generative or parametric stuff using geometry nodes in Blender, and you can bring that geometry node assets or geometry nodes mm, workflow as it is into an Unreal Engine using some kind of a plugin. <clears throat> so that you can change the parameter inside the Unreal Engines on real time. I'm not sure if that, if it's still gonna run on the compile project. It might just run on the editor, but at least I saw that, just like you can do in Houdini Engine. So it might be possible. If it can, if it could run on compile project, then that will be really cool. If that's possible, I would like to really try that. Since Blender is an open source project, it might be possible to use it as a compile project. Houdini is a not an open source project, so you cannot use this Houdini engine and compile project. Can only run on the editor, but because of the license issue, I've heard. <clears throat> but for the Blender, it might be possible. Technically, it might be doable, <clears throat> license-wise, I guess. I mean, so. <clears throat> could be fun to have that kind of uh, functions on real time. Okay, what was I? So I want to be able to rotate these or orient these branches based on the curve up and normal vector. <clears throat> so let's do that. So first thing first, uh, we need to get that um, normal and tangent vector information on the curve okay so let's get that uh, somewhere okay, on the create branch <coughs> let's get the maybe I could do this inside here vector uh, tangent we'll be using another UV sample here What I want to get here is the N, and I also, also want to get the up vector value. So, vector up, which is the perpendicular, <coughs> no, name this perp, Ve perpendicular vector. So, now that I have two vectors coming from the base curve, I, don't, I want to use these to decide these branch direction. Now let's start by using this perpendicular curve instead of this <coughs> x direction. See what happens. There you go. Looks more natural. Okay. Maybe I want to be able to control the length itself. So let's also do that. I could multiply this perpendicular direction with some kind of a length. So branch length. Okay. Now it's controllable. Still animated. Cool. <coughs> Okay, now it's time to rotate this branch based on this core uh, curve more naturally. Probably using a spiral, <coughs> a golden uh, angle. That is 137.5 degrees per branch, uh, per iteration. So. I'm gonna create the angle somewhere, maybe somewhere on here. 
branch angle is 137.5 multiplied by <coughs> the angle uh, iteration, which could be D0. I mean I. And convert this into a radians. Like that. Alright, <coughs> now what I'm going to do next is to rotate this perpendicular direction with this angle using a tangent as an axis. So let's do that. I'm going to use, I'm going to create the branch rotation matrix starting from identity, rotate it with the branch angle using an axis which is this tangent okay now I want to rotate this perpendicular so <clears throat> I'm gonna rename this to uh, branch direction by rotating the perpendicular vector value with the branch rotation matrix and replace this with the perpendicular and there you go looks like looks more like a totem pole but uh, starting to look more organic I hope if I increase the branch number start to see Still doesn't look like a plant, but I think it's a good start. There you go. Looks more like it. Now, <clears throat> uh, next thing I might want to be able to control is the starting angle for this branches. You can see it's going straight uh, perpendicular to the curve, but I might want to tilt it to the upper direction or down direction <coughs> and below directions to this curve uh, to make it more natural okay M meaning making the initial angle a bit more higher uh, rather than keeping it to the 90 degrees to the curve so let's also be able to change that by adding additional angle <coughs> uh, rotation to this branch direction vector value. So to you to rotate each curve uh, <coughs> in this direction, and you need to have an additional axis which is perpendicular to this curve and this curve, which you can get it by calculating the calculating the cross product between this and this direction in this case this is the branch direction this is the tangent vector so you already have that information you just need to <coughs> calculate the cross product so in between the branch direction and the tangent direction just in case, I'm going to normalize this. Because <clears throat> I'm going to use this inside a rotational matrix again. It's always a good idea to make the axis value length equal to zero or normalized. Now, <clears throat> let's create another rotational matrix. I'm gonna name this rotation branch rot mat 2. Uh, starting by an identity matrix again, rotate it using some kind of um, angle. Not sure what that is yet, so I'm gonna create a constant value like 30 degrees in radians. Then rotate. Branch rot mat two. <clears throat> uh, wait, gotta 
this needs to be in an axis, so branch axis. Okay, now <clears throat> it's time to rotate the branch direction. with this rotational matrix and see what happens okay so it's been tilted 30 degrees up and looks more natural i think so let's also have this as a parameter <clears throat> i'm gonna name this tilt angle Okay, tons of parameters. At the end, you'll have very versatile parametric <coughs> setup. And I want to be able to use this tilt angle instead of constant value. There you go. In this case, you might also want to be able to set the negative value so that it can go downward. So let's say I'm going to go from minus 90 degrees to positive 90 degrees. Like that. Okay. Now, <clears throat> it might be also a good idea to be able to change the range, the angle for uh, these branches based on the position. If it's at the bottom, you might have more openings. <clears throat> or gradually, you might also want to change based on the frame. You might, uh, you want to, you might also want to be able to control those <clears throat> based on many parameters. So, I I think just having one constant value for every branch angle is not a good idea this one so want to be a ha want to be want to be able to control these based on some conditions <clears throat> either timeline or position or something I'm gonna uh, do this by position I think just like I did for these base rotation uh, <clears throat> base curves rotation bending I mean okay so to do that again you need a <clears throat> uh, normalized value which in this case a curve u value this one or yeah curve u value and i could use this curve u value <clears throat> or it m you could also say f you could use these f value to determine in which position the branch is at and use that information to uh, set the angle <clears throat> okay so uh, let's make a space for that so you have a let's say this is the maximum angle angle <clears throat> and you also might want to have a minimum angle for the tilt angle to decide what go what values go from 0 to 1 and start to the end so maybe this can be called as a start angle and you might also want to have an end angle so let's rename this to start tilt angle Angle. You also might want to have a end tilt angle. Okay, and I'm all, I'm going to recreate this tilt angle by <coughs> fit. We'll remap the 
f value which is in between 0 to 1 into a start tilt angle to end tilt angle okay and recreate these value let's see what happens so start angle let's say I want to start from really high angle and gradually it opens up to zero or maybe to the negative direction it looks like that looks fine okay or if you go from negative to positive looks like that <clears throat> so that makes it more control over the overlook of the uh, branches and final things I could add to this one is using additional ramp parameter <coughs> using ch ramp uh, for this so maybe I could first remap this uh, curve view or f to or maybe I can just since f is already from 0 to 1 I could just use the ch ramp as it is <clears throat> like that update the f itself having these curve and by changing the curve you can create m control the mapping of the changes like a logarithmic curve and so on or more like a sine wave which doesn't look really look natural but might be interesting okay so having that starting to get the base uh, structure it's now time to create some details to these branches. <clears throat> mm. uh, I have a question from Kasali. Uh, I have a Vexilated question. Can optimal transport algorithm somehow be realized in Vex? I'm not sure what that is. Optimal transport. Let me just check. Optimal transform, transport. <clears throat> it's good for blending several meshes into one since it finds only best pairs of blending versus candidate. Hmm. Interesting. Let me see. Seems doable, not sure. I think it's a really interesting topic for sure. Hmm. Let me look into this. <clears throat> Yes, really interesting. Thanks for the topic. <clears throat> okay. Uh, not sure if it can be done all in VEX, but let's see. <clears throat> so where was I? Uh, now that I have the <clears throat> initial branch uh, information, um, I think it's time to go for the next step but before going into the next step I also want to be able to change the lengths uh, differences between the position right now the branch length is also constant which is not natural maybe the one at the end is have lower lengths the one at the bottom has longer lengths as a final branch length 
So let's also be able to control that as well. Same as the tilt angle. So you can reuse the setup I used for the tilt angle pretty much the same way. <clears throat> so I have the branch lengths. And so you could decide having the the minimum lengths and the maximum lengths and using ch ramp and get the final result so let's copy these <clears throat> and decide start branch lengths start branch lengths and and branch lengths and branch lengths all right okay going back remove this one Not sure the maximum will be like, let's say five for now. <clears throat> and if is, I would like to have another ramp parameter, which is, okay. Now that I think uh, F is going to be reused everywhere here, so I shouldn't um, <clears throat> override the F, but I should create a new parameter for each. I'm going to call this F B F L or L F for this one. And for the tilt angle, I'm going to name this T F. And using T F. Okay. Now, we need to rewrite some of the variables. This will be branch length using LF, start branch length and to the end branch length. Okay. Okay, need to make it as a variable. All right, so let's see what happens. Um, I'm missing. Okay, I need to also change this ramp parameter. So branch length ramp ramp. <coughs> All right. Now I have a start branch length and end branch length to control start to start to end for the branch lengths okay then also able to control the growth ratio for this length okay cool go <clears throat> okay looks good enough now now that I have enough information to go for the detail detailing for these branches let's go to the next step I have enough lengths and uh, direction for each curve now what, I'm, what i want to do next is the same step i did for the cur core curve which is this bending i want to bend each branch just like i did uh, for these core curve <clears throat> okay that's what i would like to do so let's see how i could do that <clears throat> <clears throat> um, first thing first, 
I need to create a I need to separate the core curve and the branches so that I could only work on the branches for now so let's set the group to each of the branches after I have created so set prim group call this branch to each branch line <coughs> So that I'll be able to split to branch and core. So this will be branches, this will be core. <coughs> okay, and things that I want to do with these is to create the the uh, bending for each curve just like I did for the core curve here okay so <laughs> let's do that and in order to do that uh, what we need to do is to first create this rig uh, doctor <coughs> to initialize the transformation information and probably I might also need to use set the UV as well. And before I also need to use this resampling uh, to create a bunch of points on a curve. So I'm gonna copy all these. Then connect it to branch. Let's see what happens. Okay, so branch, resample, UV somehow it only seems to create seems to reset the number of primitives to one okay it might be due to the <coughs> limitation with this rig doctor or if I'm if I'm having some kind of uh, unnecessary attributes not sure why I might need to use the for loop for this one <coughs> Yeah, but let me just try deleting all the attributes and see if it's still not, if it still doesn't work for multiple number of primitives. Just gonna check deleting all attributes, and if it doesn't work, yeah, it doesn't work. So I'm just gonna use for each. For the rig doctor part <coughs> and initialize the transformation okay this one works so seems like I need to do this way not sure why okay it's not that slow so I'm fine Okay, now I have initialized all the branches with the Rec Doctor. You have initialized transformations. It's now time to um, <coughs> do the rotation, I think. Bending, I think. Now, in order to do the bending, you could directly do this, but... Um, yeah, you could do this now, or you could do this later. <clears throat> Shall we do this now? Um, in order to do that, you need to have some additional information for these bendings because uh, for the core, cur core curve, <clears throat> you know that it's starting on a Y direction, but for these curves, you don't really know in which direction it starts the bending, <coughs> I mean the growing. So the condition is a bit different, more versatile. But let's see. I'm gonna copy paste this rig wrangle and see if I need to fix this. Okay. Now looks interesting, but the core <coughs> is also rotating somehow 
the problem here is that it's shifting the the <coughs> original point position is shifting to somewhere else so we need to fix that that is because um, <coughs> the rotation is um, always based on uh, the transformation is always based on the zero 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 coordinate so if you wanna stay at some <coughs> if you want to set this as a origin you need to first move these curve into the center then do the transformation then make this back to the original position later in some programming language it's called like push and pop matrix <coughs> so she gotta do that but the angle wise it is doing the rotation but also having some weird rotation <coughs> it since it's based on the point number and the point number here cannot really be used because each branch number have different types of point numbers there's multiple number of branches you cannot just use these but it has to be based on the primitive for each primitive on each primitive you need to know <coughs> uh, which one is the start point and which was the end point so for each primitive you need to calculate its own point number starting from 0 to here so 0 to 10 or something like that <coughs> so <coughs> we need to fix all these informations based on that uh, insight so instead of using point number we need to use primitive based numbers so first thing first we need to get the primitive number <coughs> for from each point so point prims give you a primitive number for each point and I know that each point only has one connected primitive so I'm just gonna access the first pr uh, one from this array <coughs> now you get the primitive uh, let's also get the total number of total at all point numbers from this primitive using prim points like that <coughs> and finally you could get uh, you could find its index so you know that this pt num at pt num is included in this pts somewhere so you know you want to know in which index it's included so you can find that by using find function with ptnum inside pts now that ha now that you have index which is in between 0 to the length of pts minus 1 you can recreate this f by dividing index divided by the length of PTS minus 1.0 there you go so each curve is bended based on these f value based on each primitive point number so that's good now everything is bending like a same manner <coughs> now the next issue um, we want to be able to fix the starting point position to stay on the core, core curve so if I merge these merge the branch and the core again uh, wait a minute it's, it is on the uh, branches somehow hmm. why is that I guess it's because the starting angle is zero. If I make this, oh, doesn't really change anything. That is because I need to go here. If I change these, what happens? 
Oh, still works. Okay, so seems like I don't really need to shift these <coughs> the curve after all. So that's good. So what I want to fix now is these rotational axis. Everything is rotating weirdly. So I want to be able to control each branch rotation based on some uh, <coughs> perpendicular or uh, tangent vector from the connected curve position somewhere around here okay or the direction of the branch itself the original branch direction itself so let's go go back and see which part I need to fix okay so I got the max angle it's fine mm. ch ramp it's fine it's fine now I need I might need to make this individual independent from the core this is using the core angle a uh, core ramp as this one as well so I want to reset that so this this will be <coughs> only for the branches so I'm gonna delete the channel also delete this channel to unlink with the controller so that I can independent individually control these <coughs> right Okay, makes it possible to rotate only for these branches. Now, <coughs> next, uh, what I would want to do is to change this axis, uh, this one here, which is currently not suitable for the branches. <coughs> so let's think what is the best axis to bend this branch okay let me look at this one here or this one here so <clears throat> I think for example for this branch it might make sense to rotate in this plane which is using the perpendicular uh, direction perpendicular to this um, branch direction and this tangent vector which means these axis using this axis as a <coughs> base axis to rotate this branch might make more sense I think and that axis is already created previously when I have created the branches so I can bring that as an attribute to each branch so that I can access it later <clears throat> so let's do that shall we um, where, where was that this one the branch axis so I already have that <clears throat> so I want to be able to use this one to do the bending so let's have this applied to a primitive attribute after I have created line so set prim attrib hello everybody like that okay anything else that I need I might also want to get I might also want to have the information for the touching the tangent vector for this touching branch uh, I mean touch quite the core branch as well as the branch direction itself as additional information may be useful so let's also have that set prim attrib <coughs> tangent which was where was it? This one. Tangent. Right, so. Anything else? Um, <clears throat> yeah, the branch direction itself, which is 
uh, this one, right? So let's have that as well. Set create magic. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use these, but uh, good to have those information so that you can use it for many purposes later. <clears throat> okay, let's check. Got the primitive attribute. I have axis, direction, and the tangent. All right. Now, let's go back to the Rick Doctor. Rick Doctor, Doctor, Doctor. And remove these. And recreate this <coughs> axis. So first thing first, I could bring up the uh, the axis branch axis attribute from the primitive. So I'm gonna access the prim since I have the primitive number attached to the point. I can do this. See what happens. All right. So it's rotating and upward hmm interesting maybe i want to rotate it in negative direction so in this case maybe i could make this negative so that it looks more natural yeah let's see what happens okay looks good Okay, and now that I think of, I could uh, add additional <coughs> uh, information to the branch, such as this F value. Okay, so let's also give that, which might be used for uh, again to control like the amount of angles for each branches later bendiness <clears throat> okay now if I merge these how does it look like okay Re already looks pretty interesting uh, let's make the start branch length a bit bigger all right okay looking interesting <coughs> looking more like a kind of a planty like And now, <clears throat> let's see what else I could do for these. Um, I could still um, control the axis just like I did for the core to add some noise, but maybe that's really minor, so I, I'm just gonna skip it for now. Maybe I could do this later. And what else? The angle. So if I, the 40, oh, this is interesting. So if I make the initial angle more than zero, this will just split up. <clears throat> so it seems like I always need to make the initial angle to zero to keep, keep it on the curve. That might be fine or since I already have an uh, option to able to change the initial angle before. <clears throat> so that's fine, I think. Need to be careful not to change this curve. But if you still want to use these kind of a curve, 
you could still make this go back to the original positions <coughs> but not in the rig doctor i think the rig wrangle i think you need to do this outside the rig angle <coughs> in order to make this back to the original positions because because <coughs> Let me see if I can do this in here. First thing first, um, need to know the initial point position of the primitive, which is PTS zero. So this should be the the point position on the curve for each primitive for each branches and what I want to do is to <coughs> move each point that's been separated back to the original point position but <coughs> thing is uh, now that I uh, look at it it's not really possible to do this only inside this rig wrangle because you don't know how much it goes far from the original point position at this point so only thing you could do at this point is to give an attribute for this starting point position for each point and <coughs> create another point wrangle and do the reverse stuff so something like get the primitive and the point numbers for each primitive then also get the starting point position the current starting point position <coughs> now this is the one that has already been moved and you also have the attribute called s pulse which is the previous point position okay so what you need to do is to create the moving vector to go to this position from the current starting position and move the whole point with this direction and you can make this back on the curve okay this is more fail safe think well now you can use any kind of a curve stay always stay on the <coughs> core okay it's good I guess all right so now that I have these set up I think the next step is to animate these branches branch growth because right now it just pops up or it does seem to grow somehow not sure why but normally it just pops up like this <coughs> wonder why it rows like this uh, wait a minute is it changing the number of points huh interesting let me see what happens here oh, okay <coughs> so the lengths of the yeah now that I see here I could animate the lengths of the branch at this point so that it will be affected here I don't really need to do the um, <coughs> animation I don't need to do the animation right here might take more effort to do that so in that case maybe let's try to animate the lengths when I created the branches based on the time frame that might make more sense 
or not I'm not sure <coughs> mm. thing is thing with this uh, the problem with this setup is that uh, the growth I cannot really control the growth speed of the branches or maybe I could need to think of uh, some kind of equations let's see let's see let's see <coughs> uh, what about what is the alternative for copy stamp node hmm I have a question from hex alternative copy stamp node <coughs> not sure I mean I always use copy stamp node you could do the similar things in Vex but sometimes it takes more time so if you need to copy geometry to several <coughs> point position I always use that but other than that I'm not sure I always use this one or copy stamp <coughs> if I need to if you if I'm creating a uh, simple geometry like these like line I could do this procedurally like I'm doing right now but uh, if it's more <coughs> complex geometry then I wouldn't do that I think now let's see how I could animate this branch links not just popping up and also want to check why some of the curve is changing its length like that like this one okay <coughs> so the branch length is controlled by where here and it's been affected by using f value so I guess f is doing something right right <coughs> I want to check the curve view value for each point seeing anything curve view oops all right so the value looks fine so I guess it's F that makes something wrong it's also check this f value here mm. <clears throat> hmm. or maybe I should use curve view rather than f I don't think it makes much changes but uh, just in case doesn't make much changes so <clears throat> just want to check why this length is smaller when I when it's been created and due to the curve you <clears throat> so you have uh, this one LF let's see the F value for each primitive okay and see if it's gonna change based on the lengths okay so 0 0.29 0 0.290 so it's, the f is not changing 
So something different. If F is not changing, this TF should shouldn't change at all. <coughs> hmm. So why it's still small lengths? Is it this one? Branch lengths, branch direction, maybe. Let me normalize this and see what happens. Okay, so it hasn't been normalized, so that's the reason. Which gives me a hint how I can animate this. Oops. Branch direction. Why am I getting the error here? Okay. All right. <clears throat> so now it just pops up. So let's think how I can <coughs> animate these branches <clears throat> okay based on based on what what kind of information I can use I guess the same uh, time based value which is used in here no not here uh, programmable curve yeah this one so I could just copy this value bring this to a branch <coughs> oh but uh, no <coughs> now that I think it's not uh, suitable it's not good to do the animation here because it I need to resample later and if I change the lengths before before resampling the number of points or position of the points changes which makes the bending result weird so after all I have to do this later just like I did for the cur core curve animation so <clears throat> let's go back here and do the animation after this so I have the final result as a bent, bent uh, branches and want to do what I want to do next is to do the animation uh, <coughs> trimming animation using an another adjust prim length function <coughs> so let's copy these again maybe these set and rewrite some of the stuff to use this for the branches now, let's see first so this is doesn't really look good because it's not per branches it's uh, looking at the whole situations so the the natural way to animate is to <coughs> right after you have the core branch the bottom branch grows up like this so this one looks nice but if you look at the top part it just pops up like that so for these uh, you need to grow right after <coughs> need to go slowly after the the starting point of the branch appears as a core, core. But I just wanna I don't just want to pop these branches up but slowly grows up after the core has been generated all right so that's the information I need and to do that need to tweak these somehow <coughs> so let's see how uh, what I need to do 
Mm. First thing first. Mm, let's see. Mm, what kind of information I need? I need to know the scaling, scale information for each branches. <coughs> All right. So mm, to do that, to do that, let's uh, start by bringing the time information. <coughs> Or yeah, so I need to fix this one. It cannot just be a time value, but it has to be based on the curve information. So let's see what I need to know. <coughs> For each primitive, let's look at the spreadsheet. What kind of information I have? So I have this F value, which is the, which indicates when does the growth start for each branches. If it's zero, starts from the zero frame. If it's 0.5, start at the middle of the curve and so on. So I need to have that information for sure. Okay, I also have the perimeter, which is the total length of the branch, which is also I need. And other than that, I need to know the current time, just this one. So it's good to have the time value. <coughs> so have it as an additional variable. Branch time as attribute. And I think having those two value might be enough. Might be enough. Or and I might also need to set the growth speed for each branches. So <clears throat> it could be a ratio, it could be the absolute length how much it runs on each step on each time spe step and so on so not sure what's the best way gonna decide it later okay what else maybe that that's all and let's see need to think about some kind of equations in order to combine these three so that the scale value for this parameter starts from zero and end at one with uh, at some starting point and end at some time. <coughs> well, uh, obviously, I guess I need to use the fit function, remap some of the value to do that. And I guess I could use T probably or F, mm, maybe T. <coughs> and when T, the time value goes above F, which is the starting uh, point of the branch growth it's time the <coughs> branch start growing till uh, the tills at some point and that needs to be mm, <coughs> based on the speed information I think so F plus if, I, if it needs to be <coughs> if the speed needs to be constant for every branch, even the length is different, then you do need to use some kind of a parameter based value to control that. Then you might want to multiply it by speed. 
Yeah, that might make sense. I don't know yet, but let's see. <clears throat> Although, based on the parameter, this could go really high as a value, so I want to regularize this to something smaller value, maybe in between 0 to 1, so that it will be more easier to control. Right. <clears throat> so how do we do that? Mm -hmm. In order to do that, I want to get the core curve length, which is calculated here, right here. So I want to get that information. <clears throat> Can I get it from here? Parameter, yeah, I think I have that. So <clears throat> let's connect this core information to the third input. No, not this here, not here, but here. And get the parameter information of the original core curve <clears throat> to determine the speed since there's only one curve I'm just gonna say zero which might not be smart but okay for now all right now I can then divide the parameter the current branch parameter with the core lengths and multiply by speed. Yeah, that makes more sense, I think. Yeah. Alright. <clears throat> now, after this, I'm going to map it to 0 to 1. And see what happens. I'm not sure if it's going to work. Let's see. Oop. All right. already have some errors uh, that is because I don't have the speed uh, nope it wasn't that so what's wrong when the time is equal to close to zero and currently this is f so t mapping from f core length Maybe this calculation is something wrong. Uh, has to be primitive one. Okay. And looking this, looking at this, I wanna start from zero for this time. So let me change the expression <clears throat> a bit. Hmm, where was it? Where is it? one here so instead of using division I'm gonna use the fit function fit f f starting from one or f start to the f end multiply by point nine or maybe point eight then remap into 0 to 1. I might not need to use minimum because fit function just clamps the value. Okay, and let's copy this expression, paste it to here. Okay, so if it's zero, nothing happens. And if I play it, hopefully I'll get something. There you go. Branch is also growing. And by changing this speed, I think you can control the speed, how fast the branch grows up. Nope. <laughs> Uh, it was other way around. Hmm. 
seems like I need if I make this bigger it becomes slower so okay so <clears throat> might need to make this divided by length speed but I don't really like the divisions because if I divide by zero it just gives you infinite numbers so it's not a great idea is it Hmm. Right. Well, still. <clears throat> yes, there's no way around. So let's not try to give value zero. Starting from. It's very small. Okay. That's more like it. Let's set the speed from 0 to 10. Okay, now it looks more interesting. Although, <coughs> it still looks a bit too artificial because the speed is constant. So, maybe I could have, I could add like additional randomness to the speed for each branches to make it more organic maybe I don't know I mean for every parameters that I've created you can still add randomness to make it more natural I think so you do that your way I'll do it my way <coughs> um, but in terms of the speed I would like to change some <coughs> add some randomness so let's see how I do how I do that <coughs> hmm. um, I could add additional random value based on the primitive number I guess plus some seed <clears throat> which will give you a value in between 0 to 1 but that's a bit too much so let's fit that or remap that from 0 0.5 to 1.0 and then multiply it to this speed and that will give you some different result mm, maybe uh, makes this make it 0.75 and change the speed a bit slower okay so not constant anymore in terms of the speed might look a bit better okay <coughs> looks good all right <coughs> um, if you want to fix but I want to have questions if you want to fit vector by certain value you write three mins and three maxes mm. You could use one float value even if you fit vectors, I think. I think that's how vex works. If you have vector A. <coughs> and if you want to fit all these uh, between 0 to 1 based on from 1 to 3, then you could use fit function A and use the float value as an input <coughs> and as an output you could do like this and you still get a vector I think
Yeah, so fit function is pretty flexible. You don't really need to use vex for the input. You can just use float if you want to do the same <coughs> remapping for all the coordinate. Okay, so, so far so good. Now it's time to visualize this with some pipes or uh, some <coughs> branch uh, thicknesses, uh, tubes, I mean. So let's do that. Uh, first of all, let's start by creating a core <coughs> geometry, this one. And for that, just gonna use poly wire. And I would like to set the radius by myself precisely. Probably the bottom part should be thicker, the top part should be thinner. <coughs> so let's calculate the p scale value. Uh, <coughs> okay, based on the the current value, the current curve u value, I guess, or f value, not sure. The top part, I guess the top part should always be thin, really tip point thin. So I think I cannot just use the curve u because it's being trimmed. The last value is not always one. So it might not suitable for calculating the p-scale. Where is it? I don't see a curve view. Anyway, so I need to <coughs> recreate that kind of information somehow for these tip point. So I'm going to give another resample curve. Or mm, maybe I could just use point wrangle calculate the <coughs> p scale based on the premium v yeah or not hmm yeah I still need the u value so uh, let me use the resample node but I don't really need to add any points, so just remove this maximum segment length so it will preserve the point itself, but just add this curve view attribute will recreate the curve view from 0 to 1, <coughs> which is usable, useful to um, <clears throat> use it for the p-scale. Now I can just directly use this um, curve view as a p-scale but um, it might be better to make it um, <clears throat> look natural uh, on a p point wrangle a little bit using some kind of a curve. <clears throat> okay so Mm. What I would like to do is to first of all get the curve view value and based on the curve view I want to control the p scale and I want to have the parameter as the max p scale. Okay, and want to remap this U using ch ramp. Let's name this p scale ramp. <coughs> then create the p scale based on. the max p scale multiplied by u okay 
So, max B skill, let's start by 0.1. And I'm going to update or re override this wire radius for the poly wire with the P scale attribute or expression. And let's also add some divisions to like 10 to make it smoother. <coughs> let's also add the normal to fix the shading. Okay, now I can go back here to control the curve shape to look for the better result in terms of the curve and in terms of the thickness this looks pretty thick maybe somewhere around here no like that Not sure what's the natural expression for the plant, but let's say this is the case, and let's look at look how it grows with the branch. Now the way it grows looks a bit odd. If I just looks at it, seems to grow it seems to jump the scale seems to jump a lot it doesn't look natural is it does it uh, after all it does look natural let me just maybe this real time toggle is doing something wrong mm, okay looks good maybe too pointy all right <coughs> Okay, looks good. Now, the branch part. I'm also able to thicken the branch, but for the branch, I don't think I could just use the poly wire as it is because it doesn't really look like a leaf. But, um, <clears throat> so if I apply this poly wire, make the thickness so what I want to do is to just use the the bottom arc to um, <coughs> rail this curve I don't need a top fa part of these faces because the leaf doesn't look like this doesn't look like a pipe but you more look like a half pipe shape okay so let's uh, fix that in order to do that instead of using poly wire I'm gonna use a poly loft or poly or the skin uh, which one whichever is fine maybe using skin in order to use skin I need to do this per branches Makes it a bit slower, but there's nothing you could do to that. Or you could procedurally create the pipe using Vex for each primitive. That's also doable, but takes a lot of time. And I'm gonna skip that. <laughs> so <clears throat> let's do this one by one using for each loop. Okay, so for each primitive. Access to each primitive new skin. Let's check with the bigger one. Okay, so in order to use the skin, you need to have a bunch of cross sections and connect these cross sections together. <coughs> okay, so. 
So let's create the base cross section curve, which is going to be the arc. So I'm going to, let's say, make it six, make it open arc, make it 180 degrees, like this one. And I'm going to bring this curve to the point position of this branch perpendicular to these tangent vector of this curve. Now do I have the tangent vector? I think so. I have it from here. So let's check the normal is the tangent vector and there is also a up vector value. Yep. <clears throat> so I have enough information to place the curve to this point position perpendicularly. So let's try. Copy to point. Okay. Uh huh. Looks too big. Let's make it smaller. But I don't want to control the scale right here, but I want to be able to control the scale just like I did here using P scale. I want to use the P scale to control the scaling of these branches because it needs to fit with the core branch. If the branch starts from here, it needs to follow the thickness of the core branch uh, core <coughs> shape here. If the branch starts from here, the thickness, the starting thickness of the branch should be equal to this <coughs> size. So we need to have that information. And in order to get that information, we need to uh, sample these. Why am I having these markers? Okay. <coughs> so this is where I have calculated P scale. So I need to uh, connect this information to <coughs> somewhere on here. Or yeah so where should i connect that maybe i don't need to do that in for loop but you can do this outside a loop so for i guess it that's for the each point right so for each point you could calculate the p scale <coughs> Let's say branch P scale, and this is core P scale. <coughs> you need to follow the branch P scale has to follow the core P scale, so you link it together. <coughs> now, let's get all those information that I need. First of all, for each point on the branches, I need to know the branch primitive number to get the uh, <coughs> branch information. So prim uh, point prims. All right, then for each primitive, what information can I get? I guess this F value here, which indicates on which position this branch is attached to for each core for this core so get the f value primitive now <clears throat> using this f value you can uh, sample the p scale from the core so uh, float p scale uv sample mm, one mm, <coughs> what's the name p scale and what I want to get is the no what I want to use as a sample is Oops, currently I don't really have the <coughs> mm, 
u value. I mean, right, this is supposed to be the uv value that I want to use, but um, currently I don't have a vector value. uv sample has to use the vectors to sample. And currently this uv is not the one that I want to use. This is not based on the curve view that I have just recreated. So I need to create the new uv based on the new curve view. So um, how do I call this uv2? Just bringing the curve view as a vector. <coughs> All right, going back. Sample using uv2 and using f as a sampling value. All right, so this will be the p scale for the startings. Um, <coughs> that's p scale for the position at the core curve, which can be used for the branch thickness at the starting point position. Okay. Now, <coughs> let's start by changing this linearly based on the point position on the primitive. So, <coughs> again, I'm going to get the index of this current point number at this primitive using uh, well since I'm using programmatical curve the point number might be changing so just in case I'm going to sort by vertex by by vertex order <coughs> so that this find function for <coughs> uh, finding out the point number on the primitive points is always in the order from small to top start to end Just the precautions because newly created point comes all, always comes last, so it will sometimes make the point number messy on the primitive. <coughs> okay, now that index, I can now calculate the uh, regularized value index is in between 0 to length pts and want to make this from 0 to 1 <coughs> and want to calculate the final p scale by fit the c value to oops Call this core scale p scale so c value from core p scale to zero <coughs> and see what happened mm -hmm. okay Am I having a P scale for each point? Uh, well, it all looks small. <coughs> hmm. Why is that? P scale? Well, <coughs> I guess it's fine for now. And let's look at the initial branch here check the p scale here okay well it says 
all point zero four. Hmm. That's not what I expected. And what's what happens with these? Huh. And it doesn't seem like it's taking an account of this p scale when the when I use copy to points. I guess that's because it's also referring to these transform which is coming from the rig doctor or kinfx so i guess i need to get rid of these transform information <coughs> so let's do that uh, attribute attribute lead from point gonna delete all the transform related stuff and see what happens okay here you go now what I'm missing is the gradient scale which should be a problem here <coughs> all right so Seems like maybe this one is something wrong. Let's check. Index. So what's the index? My gut says it's negative. <laughs> okay, negative means you, it couldn't find any point number. All right. And that is because I'm using ptnum to find the primitive, and that's wrong. Need to use prim, of course. Now, when the index is all positive, you could think this works. Okay, now, it, direction wise, it's 90 degrees wrong, so let's just rotate the circle 90 degrees. <coughs> uh, and it, mm, show in which direction maybe Z yeah okay looks fine so there is a cup on the bottom of the branch and by connecting all these curve together as a mesh we'll be able to create kind of a leaf like shape I think so let's use skin nice go and then do this for each primitive finally you'll be able to get this else there you go and <coughs> temporarily <coughs> gonna connect the normal connect the color see what happens okay so if I play <coughs> now this one looks a bit too thick doesn't really look correct does it yeah Obviously, I think I need to fix this. The initial scale looks okay, but where I have these, it look, doesn't really look correct. So I need to know what goes, what's the, <coughs> what's wrong with these part. It's always using the same scale anywhere, I think. So probably this UV sample is not working as I expected <coughs> need to know why let's check for p scale oops <coughs> core p scale Seems like it's pretty much the same everywhere. That's totally wrong. 
And looking at the core P scale, do I have do I have different values? Where is it? Wait a minute. Where is the P scale? Clear view. Oh yeah, right here. So yeah, I think I do have the value. And do I have UV2? Yeah, UV2. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. UV2. Alright. <coughs> so... Hmm. This one. I was wondering if this F is correct. Let's see. For F. Okay, it's mm, mm. okay. I am getting different values, but is this correct? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it looks correct. So that's fine. That is fine. But somehow, <coughs> somehow, I'm not getting the correct values using the UV sample. Yeah. Not sure why. V sample, so I have P scale. Hmm. Right. Different P scale. And different UV two UV two. Wait a minute. Ah, okay. Actually, actually, this F is coming from the original curve view <coughs> of this. So I, I actually shouldn't look at this UV2 but I should have looked at the UV instead I think I don't really need it to check the <coughs> UV2 yeah that looks correct okay that looks fine all right then um, let's just get rid of UV2 which I didn't really need it Okay. Okay, now, and the good part here, I don't, it's not based on the solver. I can just go back and forth and debug. Okay, so <clears throat> pretty much the setup is uh, done here. Uh, things you could do after this is adding some randomness, adding some more parameters to control the detail and so on <clears throat> right now it doesn't really look like what I like so <laughs> let's try to tweak some parameters like adding more branches uh, adding more tilt angles um, <clears throat> make the lengths larger Pretty hard to control here. Now, what is this? <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> let's also control the angle. Oops. That's the tilt angle. The bending angle is somewhere around here. Let's also bring all the parameters that I created to the controller node so that I can change I can check the parameters on one place okay there you go nice <coughs> adding more condition can make more complex geometry I guess 
but the base setup I guess this could be the end for the base setup okay now let's organize this a little bit <coughs> let me know if you have any questions if you have any feedback if you think what kind of parameters could be added to this <coughs> fed up okay mm let's go one by one actually I didn't really I didn't need it the rest didn't use that uh, probable curve so this is where I'm controlling the time maybe this could be parameterized or this T itself could be parameterized so let's bring that <coughs> I'm gonna call this growth rate. Right. Mm. Create branches. So I have tons of parameters here. Let's have a separator. So the number of branches start tilt angle and tilt angle tilt angle ramp <coughs> branch length ramp branch minimum branch uh, and branch length We also have the bending informations. <coughs> uh, how do I call this? Branch bend ang Actually, just like I did for the <coughs> branch lengths and tilt angle, I could also make the start bend angle and the end bend angle for each branches. That might make more <coughs> controls over the <coughs> bendings. I'll do that later. Um, Angle ramp, branch, bend, okay, mm. <coughs> noise smooth, where does this come from, okay, I'm not using noise for this bend the branching bend so I'm just gonna remove that <coughs> okay this one no parameters medical curve okay so this is important branch growth speed and this is the random seed Random seed could be globally usable, so maybe I will just go bring it to the top. Make another separator. Okay. What else? P scale, okay. So P scale information. So max P scale. Does this is for the core? So let me rename it. Uh, core lengths. Core lengths. Resample lengths. This is used globally, so I'm just gonna place it here. 
flux phase angle. This is for the bending, right? So, <coughs> core bend max angle. And this is for the core. Core. Core bend. Okay, and we have this P scale, <coughs> core max scale, or thickness. And we have this ramp parameter again, core thickness ramp. I already have tons of parameters. It's a bit hard to know where I have <coughs> what does what. And I also have the branch P scale. Now, I didn't really add any cur ramp to this one. Maybe I want to add that later to this one to have more control so that I have more variety of pedal shape. Okay. <coughs> What else? P scale. This one's pretty much automatic. Okay, so that's about it for now. So let's add some parameters, I guess. Especially for the shape of this branch, meaning P scale. Currently, this is kind of a linear shape, going triangularly, triangle shape. <clears throat> if you flatten this out, so maybe I want the middle part to be a bit more thicker to have variety of shape. So <clears throat> let's see. Mm, the <clears throat> initial scale always have to be this core P scale. That's a must. Okay. In addition to that, maybe I could add some. <clears throat> curve some kind of a curve like these to control additional p scale to this one additional thickness to this one if you it could always be something like like a sign based curve maybe using sign based curve makes sense yeah shall we do that <coughs> okay so, mm, uh, so this is the f currently this is the final. But adding to this one, I would like to <coughs> add additional P scale to this. And yeah, let's think. <clears throat> add additional thickness let's just set randomly and what I would like to do is to <clears throat> use a sine curve or sine function to go from 0, 1, 0 to have a nice mountain like curve and multiply it by add thickness and add it to the branch P scale. Okay, so what, where can I get the. Okay, so I have the C which goes from 0 to 1. So I can <coughs> use sine C multiplied by uh, pi, which will give you a volume between 0 to 1 and the mountain-like curve. 
<clears throat> and multiply by add thickness and finally you can add that value to <coughs> this one oops all right <laughs> okay um wow thing is that maybe i shouldn't use this constant value but based on the based on the core branch p scale maybe not adding but maybe i should multiply it and make the range more than one <coughs> so that it becomes a bit more natural there you go nice now <coughs> i might still want to have like a ramp parameter based on these conditions based on these positions to control <coughs> the thickness above and the bottom but this one looks nice i guess mm, all right i think i like it okay so let's add some ramp parameters to control these p scale looking fine <coughs> looks good okay so where was i where was i uh, so <coughs> based on this f value here i could create a ramp parameter again so for this at p scale maybe somewhere mm, could be multiplied to this p scale after or to here anywhere is fine i guess so <coughs> let's create the p scale ramp um, <coughs> how do I call that? PF CH ramp parameter. I guess I'm having too much ramp parameters, but um, <coughs> anyway. Multiply this with this one. Okay, so the normal condition is like that. This is a previous condition. And by tweaking this, something like that, you can make the top part thing and the bottom part thick like that okay getting more interesting okay I guess I should also make these like mathematically <coughs> mathematical equations but uh, I'm not sure what's the natural uh, description of the plant as a real, so just making all parametric. <coughs> okay, getting better. What else I could change? So this is for the P scale. Uh, let me add it to the controller again. <coughs> For the branch, so uh, 
branch, additional thickness, or additional maximum thickness, should I say. This is the P ramp branch. All right. <clears throat> what else? What else? Um, Yeah, so the bending, it seems like I already have some bending variations. Where did I control the bending? Here. <clears throat> this is the... the, 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 the. Okay, getting there. So the branch bending I have. So I already I only have one maximum angle to control the angle based on the position, which might be okay. Which might be okay. But it's not really straight. Ah, uh, <coughs> hmm. This F value that I have here is based on the point position, a point number on the branch, on each primitive, right? Yeah, and that's the only value that I have here. And it's not really related to the position on the, on the core. So we could also introduce that core position as additional parameter to control the angle maybe uh, may or maybe that's too much I don't know <clears throat> maybe I mean it's imaginable so maybe you could add it by yourself if it's not really necessary let me know if it's <clears throat> good way to go if not I'll just end it here um, will you add UV to the growing plants? Ah, I see. So, the pipe, the polywire, oh, I think already has some wire, uh, UVs, I guess. No, maybe not. Or maybe yes. <coughs> if I look at the polywire, so this uh, already has a UV, so maybe you could use that as it is. V value doesn't look correct, is it? Does it? <clears throat> hmm. And since I'm also creating my own UV somewhere, uh, well, this doesn't have it, so that's fine, I guess. But I guess before connecting this to a P scale, a polywire, maybe I should get rid of the UV just in case it's not using it. <clears throat> I thought uh, polywire will create a UV, but let me see. UV, click shade, see what happens. <coughs> okay, so it does seem to shows up for this one. Mm, okay. So, that's good for the pipe, I guess. So for the for the 
skin one I'm not sure if it has a UV so let me check <clears throat> maybe it doesn't yeah so for this one I think I guess I need to create UV myself now let's see how I could wait a minute ah uh, ah uh. The problem with the initial thickness. Okay, I realize, I realize that I have multiplied it here, which gives a bit of a problem. <clears throat> because if the add p scale is equal to zero, then yeah, that's a problem. Hmm. Sure. 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 So, in that case, I need to think in a different way. I don't know, what if I just add it again? Maybe that's too much <coughs> in terms of this size. Yeah, but maybe this is more suitable. Yeah, I guess this is better. So I need to change the range for this P scale, additional P scale. Mm. Where was it? Bend, branch, additional max thickness. Maybe 0.1 is, could be high enough. <coughs> Or maybe one. No, I don't know. Exaggerated value sometimes could be really interesting as a return. All right, looks good. Okay, so UV. Um, <clears throat> so after I have the skin geometry, I guess I need to create the UV somehow so let's see how I could do that <coughs> I could um, use a point information coming from this curve and transfer that point information to these circle when I copied it here then <coughs> use that information on the curve to recreate the UVs on the skin yeah that's the plan so <clears throat> starting from the curve uh, I need to know I need to have a value from 0 to 1 from end to start so I guess I could use the resample again don't add any point but just add curve U and for each point uh, do I have any information for each point which indicates the curve view? I have these curve view. So let me see. <coughs> it's a so this curve view is not at till the end. But what I want is the one that's go till the end. So maybe I could cre recreate curve view again for each curve again. <coughs> and yeah. I should change the name, I think. How do I call this? Mm. That's so dumb. I'm gonna call this curve U1. Oh, that's so dumb. <laughs> well, <clears throat> anyway. And I want to transfer this curve U2 to 
each curve. I think I can do that here. Is it already transferring? Curve U, nope, it's not. So, gotta think. This one has, wait a minute. Need to click here, click here. So curve U2. Okay, I actually have it transferred. So each point has curve U1, curve U2, and I can just use these as U or V for each skin. So <clears throat> I can just transfer these. Um, if I want to do this for a, for a vertex, maybe I can use vertex attribute, vertex wrangle. <clears throat> And for each vertex, I want to know the point number. And using this point number, I need to know the point position. Wait a minute, does the skin already has those attributes? Oh, actually it does. That's good. That's good, then I don't really need to refer to the second input. I just need to get those two informations. First U. Or I can just mm, promote it to a vertex. Point to vertex, curve U1, and curve U2. Then use that to create a UV. will do it. Okay. Hope it makes sense. Now the way the UV is being created for the leaf and the core is a bit different. I can see that. Mm, maybe I need to tweak how it's being made for these <clears throat> mm. way the poly wire maze but <clears throat> I guess looking at these you could still use it it's a bit skewed here somehow right are there any UV related labs poly wire UV this I guess this is it Uh, how do I use this? Can I use the P scale still? Nope, <laughs> that's a problem. <clears throat> so this does seem to create a clean UV, but uh, does it give me an access to P-Scale? Nope. Nope. Unfortunately, nope. That's not good. Hmm. That's not good, is it? try to set the similar value to this one and see if I can get each point number at the same positions then I can transfer it 
<clears throat> you can add that after the first polywire just for UV. Maybe. Yeah, that's what I would like to try out now. If I use the same parameters, hopefully, if the position is correct. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> similar. So we have. It's a bit hard to see here. Guys. Da, 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 da. So 155, 156, 157. This one. Okay, looks similar. Total number of points, 170. Total number of point, 170. Okay, it looks pretty much the same. So maybe I can transfer the attributes. What's these? Mesh curve. Okay. <clears throat> so, mm, vertex from one. What's the parameter? So, one UV linear vertex index. Okay. works nice <clears throat> okay then that's the way to go I guess everything done UV is also seems a bit too s seems a bit slow oh forgot to make this <coughs> Getting slower because of the I don't know which one's making slow. <coughs> All right, looking good. Doesn't really look like a leaf now. <laughs> Initially, I just wanted to create uh, just a leaf plant, <coughs> but it's okay. It's okay. I could use it for flowers more, I guess. <coughs> Pretty fun to control these. There you go. Nice. <coughs> Maybe I could use some fake shading to this one. Let me just add some matte cap shader. And use one of the <coughs> Matcap textures that I downloaded from the web, which is the green based one. Let me see if I can show it. Uh, just open it up. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, so this is the one that I just downloaded from a Google image. I'm not sure if it's copyrighted or not, so I'm not going to <coughs> uh, post it. Uh, but if you could find it by yourself, I am going to use that to shade this. I 
nice. Looking better. Looking more like a plant. <clears throat> cool. Okay, so this is well <laughs> maybe the scale also has to have some time based information because the initial scale looks a bit too big. <laughs> Yeah, I think. So, branch B scale. We, I need to know the time information. Where is that? The time. I'm just going to copy from here. Growth rate. Yeah, I'm just going to copy this one. Bring up. <clears throat> the value <clears throat> multiply it somewhere here or to here maybe then it will gradually scale up based on the time Or maybe you could remap it. Maybe you don't need to use the T for <clears throat> the whole stage, but maybe you could also set some speed to this. For now, uh, I'm not gonna add any additional parameters gonna be because it's gonna be too busy. So just gonna go like, mm, fit t point zero to point maybe two five just go from zero to one so 20 price uh, it will take 25 20 <laughs> it will take 20 percent of the whole time to grow the whole petal yeah makes sense I mean, you could parameterize these later by yourself, I guess. <clears throat> Alrighty. Alrighty. Um, let me know if you have any more questions to these. Uh, if not, I think I'll just add end here. Make it brighter. Or I could uh, maybe I'll just make some brighter color. <clears throat> it's nice, a bit brighter. There you go. I'm not sure if it's on the screen, but uh, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> anyway. Hmm. Uh. I'm creating with Vellum and Kinefax. You can add a little bit of noise to leaves for some unevenness. Yeah, sure. You could do that. Um, <clears throat> right now, it's uh, still a bit too artificial, I guess. Not so <laughs> organic. So maybe you could add, you could always add several <clears throat> parameters or several additional randomness to these somewhere over here you could also add some randomness to the bending just like I did for the core uh, rotation the core bending yes <clears throat> if I do that to everything then it's just gonna take tons of time so I'll leave it to you uh, <clears throat> the one thing I'm looking at it and right now this is the a really 
um, say, a direct. It's just a circle. It's maybe, but maybe I could also make it as an ellipse. See, ellipse. <clears throat> In those cases, you can just go back here and control the scale on. Not here, but uh, this way. Maybe you could also parameterize these as well. <coughs> Make it more like a ellipse <coughs> shape. Oh, nice. I'll keep it. Maybe I could parameterize this since this is easy enough. Mm -mm -mm. Circleness. So if I if you make it zero, it would look like a line, like that. Which is also looks more like um, one from PlayStation Two. Hmm? If you want to, if you want time lapse step effect, when what node will it use? <coughs> uh, if you want time lapse step effect, <coughs> A time lapse. What kind of effect is that? Mm, not just animation. <coughs> or like, ah, okay, like step, step by step. Um, in those cases, you could just use like something like time shift or something, time blend, time shift. <coughs> mm, maybe this one, time shift. <coughs> and instead of using just frame as it is, you could, for example, if you want to take 10 frames at a time, you could <coughs> divide it by 10 then floor it <coughs> that will make ah no 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 <coughs> that's not what I wanted to do <coughs> and I guess multiply it by 10 again Yeah, that, something like that. Does it make sense? So, making this value and value this value the same, you can cut off some of the frames. Okay, I'm not sure if that's uh, what you were asking, but uh, that's one way to do it. Okay. <coughs> okay, I guess that's pretty much it. Now you could just play out um, with all the parameters we set here. Maybe you could create like a cone-like shape. <coughs> Originally, I also wanted some kind of a flower on the top, but uh, th that takes more time, so maybe another time. Mm. But this itself still has very <coughs> various options to create various shapes, so hopefully you could play out with it. <coughs> Uh, as always, I'm going to upload this 
to a GitHub, you could download from the video description page or from the Patreon <coughs> page. Um, so please try to look at it, try to download it late after I have finished the live stream. It's all available for free. <coughs> and if you have any feedback or anything, uh, if you could leave a comment or <coughs> join the Patreon, it would be great. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining the live stream today. <coughs> I will uh, like this and the uh, stream now. Please do flower next time, like rose or something. Sure, <coughs> I do like I, I love roses. <coughs> I guess there are many ways to create flowers. Mm, man, I see many people creating flower setup using Houdini, so maybe I could show my way. <coughs> Not sure how I would uh, approach, but uh, I could test that see the difference with others <coughs> okay any more questions not I'll like to end this thank you and good night <coughs> good night everybody I'm sorry that <coughs> every time I'm noticing the notifying the live stream really late. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Good night. See you next time.